I, I kept hearing the phrase failing schools and that children will be drawn from failing schools. Okay, as these kids are being drawn from these failing schools, what happens to that failing school? Well, um, the, will sorry. that school be allowed to continue to fail? Uh, so what resources are going to be given to that school where these children are being drawn? So is this going to continue to just be allowed to fail? Well, n number one, uh, it, it, our goal is to raise water level for all schools. And our experience, the experience around the country is that, quite frankly, you've got to dra drop a lifeline into these schools. We're not talking about abandoning the schools that are not uh, 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 succeeding in uh, providing a path to success for their kids. Uh, but we're trying to, uh, to, to give an outlet and while also continuing to improve the quality of education for the kids uh, left behind. Moreover, you know, these schools are not, uh, the charter school district doesn't just take from uh, public school one, okay, uh, from elementary school uh, John Smith. Uh, it takes from, uh, it w is open for admission to students from across the charter district. So if one charter school opens in a two county or three county area, uh, you know, you may wind up having 200 kids who are allowed to enter. We're not talking about decimating the population of any single school. Uh, we hope that uh, all of the schools are going to uh, uh, improve as a consequence. Madam Secretary. Madam Chair, Senator, just to, uh, to reinforce that, this administration will not give up on any school and we will not give up on any child. But what we're saying is this is a yes and. We cannot lose another generation by waiting to fix everything. But we're going to do everything possible to ensure that every school is supported, that we're investing in teachers, we're investing in training, we're investing in the best curriculum, all of those things. And yet this is also a way to ensure that if we can help students now and, and have innovation and involve more people and expand more opportunities, we can do both of these things. But we can't wait to have everything fixed at the same time. We need to also provide an outlet um, in a way that also provides accountability to ensure that we're serving these children, especially the ones that right now we know year after year are not being served by the schools that they're in right now. There's very good evidence to show that schools from which star charter students come actually the students in those schools do better as do the charter school students. And some of that is, is reflected in the concept of smaller classrooms. And, you know, Madam Chairman, I, I listened to this committee for seven years. I know the hearts and minds of everybody on this committee. We want every child in Virginia to do better. There's an incredible unfairness in how our schools are now attributed. And that is by zip code. And there are, there are Virginians who cannot choose where they live. And they end up going to the schools that are the schools that have the least likelihood of helping them access the education that they need. Education reduces your chronic illness. Um, it reduces, it increases your, your opportunity for everything in America, every opportunity. And so having said that, this is a way that is constitutional from reading this and looking at the complications we've had in the past for us to give kids a way to get an education that allows them to access the American dream and overcome where they might have to live. I really hope this committee will support this. 